The film begins with a woman named Natalia and her mother, Alina, driving to the hospital through a storm. The lady is in labor. She begs her mother to hurry up because she is in pain. When they arrive at the hospital, a nurse at the front desk informs them that no doctors are currently available. As a result, she assists the woman herself. Natalia gives birth, but the baby does not cry. In fact, he appears to float in the air, as if he is lighter than it. The three are taken aback, and Natalia grabs the umbilical cord and gently pulls him towards her. Natalia and her mother flee with the newborn without telling the nurse. Natalia is overjoyed to have given birth to such a special child, she believes her child is an angel. Natalia believes that if he eats something, he will stop flying. Alina asks Natalia who the father is, but Natalia doesn't know because she was a prostitute. Alina then declares that the child will not be permitted to leave the house, she wishes to protect the child from the cruel world outside. Alina awakens the next morning to find the child sleeping on the ceiling. She carefully lowers him. Oscar is the name given to him by the two. Just then, four of Alina's friends arrive at their door to see the newborn. Natalia belts the baby to the crib and covers him with a blanket. The women are unconcerned, one of them tries to pick up Oscar, but Alina refuses, citing the baby's fragility. The women then walk away. The two then make the ceiling of the house comfortable for the child so he can sleep soundly. Oscar is allergic to the sun, so he can't go outside, according to Alina. Cut to a few years later, and Oscar has matured into a lovely child. His grandmother still forbids him from leaving the house. He spends his days looking out the window at people and watching Batman on TV. At home, Alina also teaches him to read and write. Natalia makes him a jacket with weights in the pockets one day. Oscar is now able to walk on the ground. Natalia is relieved because she can now send her son to school. Alina, on the other hand, is opposed to him leaving the house for his own safety. Alina refuses to budge, even when Natalia insists. Oscar is alone in his house one day when he opens the window and tries to escape. When Alina and Natalia return, they are surprised to find the window open. They initially thought Oscar had run away from home, but Oscar's jacket had apparently fallen off and he was stuck in the ceiling. Not wanting to take any more chances, Alina begins to permanently close the windows, but Natalia has had enough, she wants her child to go outside and see the real world. She has an argument with her mother and takes Oscar outside that night. During their walk, she advises him to keep his power hidden in order to keep himself safe from the bad guys. He walks with a limp because he hasn't walked much in his life. Natalia starts taking him out in his jacket every day from then on. They walk hand in hand, and Natalia even teaches him how to walk properly. Natalia and Oscar are out shopping one day when she abandons Oscar outside a store. While he waits, he runs into Agata, a young girl, and drops her groceries. The little girl is enraged and requests that he assist her in carrying the groceries to her house. Oscar hesitates at first, but eventually agrees to assist her in carrying bottles. The two walk out of the store. On the way, they discuss a variety of topics. Oscar is tired after a while of walking because of the weights in his pockets, so he throws them out. He is kept on the ground by the weight of the bottles. When they arrive at Agata's house, she asks for the bottles. Oscar refuses, knowing that he will fly away without them. The bottles are yanked and eventually dropped by the two. Oscar flies up now that the weights are gone, but is thankfully stopped by a roof. The little girl thinks he's a superhero and stares at him in awe. She hands him her backpack, so he can remain on the ground and promises not to tell anyone. Natalia is at home, distraught over her son. Just then, he bursts through the door. He tells his mother about his new acquaintance. When asked if she is aware of Oscar's abilities, he lies and claims that she is not. Agata and Oscar begin playing together the next day. 
She comes to Oscars for playdates every day. Agata's grandmother brings her over one day. Natalia realizes that Agata is aware of Oscar's abilities as they converse, so she forbids Oscar from playing with her the following day. Every day, Agata pays a visit to Oscar's house, but Natalia always finds a reason to send her away. Agata brings her grandmother to Oscar's one day. Natalia dismisses them, claiming Oscar must do his homework, but Agata reveals that Oscar does not attend school. The grandmother, along with other women in town, summons the police to Natalia's home. They demand that Natalia and Alina enroll Oscar in a school, and the two agree. Oscar's first day of school has arrived, Natalia welcomes him, but quickly realizes that the kids are supposed to leave their backpacks and overcoats outside. She drags him back to the car, and they drive back home. To avoid anyone checking on Oscar's condition, they finally decide to relocate to a remote town. Cut to a few years later, and Oscar has matured. Alina was no longer alive. The mother and son have relocated to the mountains and are leading normal lives there. Oscar is always carrying his backpack. Oscar sees an advertisement for a talent show on TV one day. The announcer encourages anyone with a special talent to audition for the show. He wants to participate in the show to showcase his talent, so he decides to leave town without informing his mother. Oscar attends a talent show a few days later and displays his flying abilities to everyone. Everyone is taken aback. Some people believe Oscar is an angel. Oscar catches the attention of a talent scout named David, who offers Oscar the opportunity to become a celebrity. David informs him that he will be invited to TV shows to demonstrate his talent. Oscar's greatest wish is to have a biography written about him, and David promises to make that a reality. Oscar signs a contract with David without hesitation. Then David gives him the stage name, A Man Without Gravity. Following the signing of the contract, David presents him with a luxurious home as a gift. He wishes his mother could join him in the house, but David forbids it. The next day, Oscar begins appearing on TV shows and in magazines as a model. He enjoys the fun city life at first, but as he grows older, he begins to feel empty and bored. He begins to gain a large number of followers. David purposefully fabricates false Oscar stories in order to increase Oscar's fame. He even creates an Oscar museum in which he displays random items as his belongings in order to profit from them. Oscar later complains about the media spreading false information about him. He no longer wishes to live his life in this manner. He is tired of the celebrity's lifestyle and requests that David terminate the contract. But then David mentions a publisher who wants to meet with him to write a book about him. Hearing this, he reconsiders, his dream of having a book written about him is finally coming true. He is completely overjoyed. When he meets the author and publisher, he discovers that they are only interested in selling as many books as possible for a profit. They want to exaggerate his life story, portraying him as extremely poor, as a child and embellishing with false stories. Oscar refuses to work with the publisher after hearing this. The next day, David invites Oscar's mother over because he knows how much Oscar misses her. She arrives at Oscar's house for a party. Oscar used to collect motivational quotes, which Natalia has brought with her. Natalia is overjoyed to see her son, but Oscar appears to be in mourning. The following day, Oscar makes an error while appearing on a live television broadcast. David is enraged at him. Oscar admits that he no longer wants to be the man without gravity. He requests that David stage his death so that he can live a peaceful life. The word quickly spreads. Everyone is talking about Oscar's death, and journalists visit Oscar's house every day in the hopes of interviewing his mother. After a few days, Oscar has changed his name to Desky. He disguises himself and pretends to be disabled in order to tie himself to a wheelchair when going outside. Desky is now a receptionist at a hotel known for its prostitutes. Except for one, 
Every room is empty on Christmas Eve. Desky goes into the room to check on the person. He meets the new prostitute, who assures him that everything is fine. As he prepares to leave, the woman addresses Desky by his given name, Oscar. Oscar is taken aback. As it turns out, the woman's name is Agata. She has begun to work as a prostitute. They are overjoyed to see each other again. They go on a date the next day and talk about many things from their past. They return to Oscar's room at night to have sex. They are in love, but Agatha is still hesitant to accept Oscar's love because of her profession. They have a huge argument about the situation and Oscar leaves. The next day, Oscar returns to his old town only to find it deserted. The museum that was set up to display Oscar's belongings has also been closed. He enters his old house and remains there for a while before someone knocks on the door. It's Agata dressed as a younger version of herself. Oscar smiles when he sees her like that. Oscar and Agata are married and live in Oscar's childhood home a few years later. Agata is expecting their child. Oscar has begun working as a window washer. The film concludes with Oscar dressed as Batman, cleaning a skyscraper window. He is living out his childhood dream. 